Okay, this is Dr. Novak. I have a question for you. What does this avocado planted pot have? This zero water filter here and this aquarium filled with sand all have in common. This is not a trip question at all. And the purpose of this video is to, well, let you know something that nobody really even talks about. And the thing that the potted avocado plant and the zero water filter, along with the goldfish aquarium filled with sand, all have in common is they all over time compact. In fact, we'll take the zero water filter for example. It has a small little 60 thousandths hole at the bottom of it. Water is allowed through gravity to pass through the filter medium, which is nothing but small beads. And over time though, it compacts. It doesn't get clogged or dirty, but it compacts to the point that no water will penetrate through it anymore. The filter must be taken out of the zero water container and then it needs to be, well, knocked around to loosen up the beads. The beads that are in there are for cleaning the water, but it will take your TDS and run it down to zero. So it's deionizing the water. Those little deionizing beads, just through gravity and slow moving water through it, compact. The next thing, if you take the pot, the avocado planted pot, the pot you are looking at, the soil was at least two and a half to three inches higher than what it was. What happened to it? Over time, just through watering within a matter of months, the soil has compacted more and more and more. Therefore, when you look at the pot and you look at the lip of the pot, you will see that it's about almost three inches lower than the day it was planted about nine months ago. Now, if we look at the goldfish aquarium, what happens to that? Same thing happens with sand. This has been explained by other YouTube channels, one of them being Aquarium Co-op, said about sand compacting. He does a good job on trying to explain how it compacts and why he doesn't use it. Well, that's exactly what happened to the goldfish aquarium and the sand that is in there. And the reason the sand compacted is because last week I took the piece of wood out, the decorative wood, and I wanted to stir the sand up. I tried to put my hand through the sand to stir it up with my fingers, and it felt like cement. Literally. I was so shocked that I tried to put my hand into it, and I realized if I don't use a lot more pressure, my hand is never going to get in to where the sand is and move it all around. Now, this is something that's never told a hobbyist. What is it? A big secret to let hobbyists know that if you use sand and dirt, like some people suggest, it is going to, over time, compact within a few months. This affects your poor water and permeability capabilities of the substrate. It reminds me of when I bought some pre-filters for my canister filter, some sponges, and they were fine sponges. What did some of the comments tell me immediately? Hey, those sponges are going to clog real, real fast, and you need a coarser sponge on your intake to your canister filter. You can't use those real fine sponges because they'll clog too fast. What do you think happens 
when you get sand and dirt, which everybody wants to use because sand is cheap and dirt is cheap, and it starts compacting, you have what is called pore water and permeability. That is the spaces that are in between each little granule of sand or dirt. As those spaces get smaller and smaller and smaller, you hinder the permeability of the substrate. Now I'm wondering what's going on with my goldfish aquarium that I'm getting algae. But I realize the sand is so compact in there that it's not allowing fluids to move freely through the substrate. Remember, water takes the path of least resistance. Okay? So, if there's any least resistance in the substrate, in the goldfish aquarium, the water will take the path of least resistance, not the path of most resistance. So, when you make an aquarium, and you put in at least two inches of sand, let's say, in two inches of soil. Well, that's four inches. That is going to compact. No different, no different than that zero water filter that has beads in it that are actually larger than grains of sand or grains of dirt. It's larger. Yet, anyone who's used a zero filter will know that even though the water is going through very slowly, like there's only a little 60 thousandths hole at the bottom of the filter element, even though it's going through very, very slowly, it compacts just from gravity alone to the point that you will fill up the top part of the filter, have the water go through, and since there is no pressure and just using gravity, it stops, and you can come back an hour later, and no water has been filtered because it is so compact. Because you have now affected the poor water and permeability. This test could be done with a zero water filter. Anyone could do it. The granule size is bigger than sand, and it's bigger than dirt. So what do you think happens when you make an aquarium and you put sand in and you put dirt in it or just 100% sand and you don't put any coarser gravel with it? Sand used to be, a long time ago, had larger stones and stuff in it, like play sand and stuff, but they don't do that anymore. They filter out the larger pebbles, I should say, in there, and now you basically just get sand. Even when I tried this with, with sea sand, which is a larger granule of sand than any of the sands we use in our aquariums, it's still compacted just through gravity and wouldn't allow nutrients and chemical and biological pathways were blocked. Like I said, Water is alike electricity. It takes the path of least resistance. We must remember that. When you use sand in aquariums, like back in the 70s, it was very thin sand, very thin. Maybe half inch, no more than an inch. That was it. Because we learned very quickly that it compacts. And I'm not the only one who is doing a video on this, but the proof is in the pudding. You wouldn't believe how hard that sand had compacted in my goldfish aquarium. So now I'm left with a choice. What do I do? Do I turn around and tear apart the tank and add more gravel to the sand where it's two parts gravel, one part sand, and mix it? to keep the poor water and permeability open? That's choice one. Do I take the sand and gravel mixture and add some uh, of the kitty litter, baked kitty litter into it to open up the sand and open up the poor water? Now, let me tell you something. I can go into my 90-gallon aquarium 
which is set up with gravel and set up with the fluval aqua substrate. And you can go in there and it's as easy as pie to put your hand in there and mess it up anywhere in the tank, anywhere in the tank. And that tank's been set up for almost three years. Yet, if you go into the goldfish aquarium with sand, you could barely get your hand into it until you really put some force into it and pressure into it to move and start moving that sand because it has compacted. I mean, I'm just telling you that can you use sand? Can you use dirt? Sure you can. But just remember, there is a downside, which is it will compact to the point where your permeability and pore water capabilities will be hindered or stopped completely, and water will then take the path to least resistance. Because I don't have any ammonia, uh, nitrites, but for some reason I'm getting nitrates, at least 20 parts per million. Sometimes it starts going up a little higher. And I empty most of the water out of that aquarium every week. I use it to water my plants. Why not, correct? It's there. I got to water the plants. I might as well use the fish tank water. It's already been dechlorinated and everything else. And if it has any nutrients in it, it's going to get to the plants. And then I fill it back up. Once a week, I do that. And still, the nitrates will not go down. And I'm wondering what's going on. Now I'm seeing a abundance of like a hair algae growing all over everything constantly. And I'm seeing uh, a purple, purple, purplish maroon color algae growing also. That's a bad sign when you have that. Because that algae is telling you things aren't going right in your tank. Green algae is one thing, but when you get that maroonish color, purple maroonish color algae growing on your wood or plants or something else, uh, you know there's a problem in your aquarium. And I was wondering, what is going on? I'm not having any problem in the Beta Aquarium, having zero problems in the 90-gallon, but for some reason that goldfish tank is going south. That is why. That sand is compacting. Because once I dig into the sand and I start hitting where the laterite is, no problem. The laterite just floats up. You can tell it's red and there's a, another substrate there, uh, which is an aqua substrate, bigger in diameter, perfectly fine. It's not compact, but the sand just compacts too much and hinders the flow of water. So that tank will have to be torn down and the substrate is going to have to be addressed. This could be the reason why People make anoxic filters and make the claim, or, or they make a plenum, and they say, oh, it does not work. Well, it works, but maybe you're using sand because it's cheap, and you can buy it at any hardware store, and maybe you're using dirt, and both of these compact. Now, I cannot believe that people are telling other people to do this and use this, make four to six inches deep of a substrate, and it's not compacting. I cannot believe they're not telling hobbyists the truth. Because once it compacts, that's it. The water flow through there and oxygen flow through there is being hindered to the point where it could be 100% stopped. Now this would explain, doesn't it, why they're telling you to fill your tank full of plants, like 70, 80% of your tank needs to be all plants. This also tells you why this misinformation about using sand and dirt is getting to people. Let me tell you something. If you've never dealt with pond or pond plants and people use dirt, or you may have a pond that has dirt. Have you ever went into a pond and seen water lilies? Water lilies, to grow real good, require high amounts of nutrients. If you don't have a substrate 
with high amounts of nutrients, they really don't seem to grow very good at all. So as the substrate builds up through the years in a pond, okay, it starts compacting. This starts making ammonia, okay, exactly what water lilies are looking for. So if you have a water lily in a tub, let's say, with no fish, you will have to add some form of fertilizer tablets like that are full of nitrogen and phosphate and put a lot of tablets in it because the aquatic plant requires a lot of nutrients, water lilies do. However, I've shown pictures of people with an anoxic filter just with BCB pots of 7x7x11 seven by seven by and their plants are growing absolutely beautiful without one speck of fertilizer. Only plant it with a little bit of laterite and kitty litter. And kitty litter draws in all the ammonia from the koi into the basket and the plants grow like banshees. So when people tell you, take your substrate, put it at the bottom of your query, make it real thick, why has no one made a video of how that sand just compacts no different than the zero water filter? That's this video for this time. Uh, thank you for watching. I just think it needs to come out to the hobbyists that not everybody is being 100% forthcoming with information. If I noticed it in my aquarium, my goldfish aquarium, definitely, definitely other people have to be experiencing the exact same thing. Why aren't they telling anybody? So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.